Thank you. And you did. <laughs> Which is nice, eh? Um, learning from failure. I won't read the rest of the slide because it's been up there long enough to read it. So, I'm Patrick. I teach improvisation, and because of that, I've decided to script most of my presentation today and give me the challenge. Um, I'm happy to fail first in continuing a semantic battle that I have with the word failure. And as an occasional lottery game dabbler, reveal my suspicious and often perfectionist view about the impossibility of winning. Now, for those of you who carefully read the Epic Fail, Epic Win poster at the back, I decided to do a little close-up on the bottom part. In this case, the irony itself is epic. So, my failure today is that I don't solely buy in to the polarity of failure and success in facilitating the learning that I do. My success today is that I don't have to think and change what I'm going to say based on what others say first. Now, my objective overall is to go beyond conceptions of failure and zone in on prototyping as the central activity where I work with my colleague Larry at the Master of Digital Media program. It's a project-based learning environment that affords... Oh, it's, sorry, that's the, that was the first prototype. Uh, this is where I actually facilitate learning. Uh, it, no, that's the, sorry, that was the second iteration. Uh, this is actually what the building looks like where I work now, currently continuing an identity crisis. Uh, now, there's all manners of experiences expressed in many different ways here. When learners engage in prototyping, there are many observed results, and here are some of them. Messing up. Failing, yes, small successes, throwing teammates under the bus, just happened today. Hallelujah moments, over self-critical states, as some have mentioned. Big wins, mistake making, yeses, noes, and yes, the panic button. So what is prototyping in the context of the learning environment where I teach? I consider it an iterative process of creating tangible artifacts as viable solutions to a problem, need, or challenge. Prototypes demonstrate a particular state of a project, a version of, incomplete, open for feedback, for review, refinement, and retrospective by the team, faculty, and the client partners who usually initiate a collaboration. As my colleague Bafia mentions in the room, what are we going to keep? What are we going to fix? What are we going to change when we prototype? Now, I'll mention Tom Chi of Google Glass fame, who has noted that no matter the environment, when you prototype, you create a culture of learning. That said, the role of prototyping is that it affords learners to fail often and learn from those failures. And just as much so, prototyping also affords learners to succeed and learn from those successes. Prototyping in learning <laughs> environments challenge notions of failure, as articulated by Tofik and Jonathan, who argue that failure in education has been largely eschewed because learning outcomes were based on successful performance on well-defined problems mm -hmm. and solutions, which emphasize memorization, protocol, and procedure. You see, the problem with failure, where I work, is that failure implies that there has been a clear outcome of success rigorously defined at the onset of a project. And that's just not true. Clear, predefined learning outcomes often clash in the project-based learning environment where I teach, where learners face ill-defined problems that they must solve. These are typically problems with real-world clients that manifest after 13 weeks as some kind of prototype, vertical slice, horizontal slice, small version, tight, compact, digital media artifact. Now, the only way to solve them is to do, to co-construct, to build, to take risks in their making, as someone will talk to later. And so, project-based learning doesn't just afford many opportunities to fail, it also affords many opportunities to succeed, or just failing, succeeding, and learning are all inseparable parts, and sometimes interdependent. Stated quite eloquently, you can't know what you don't know unless you already know it or you already know it, so why would you learn what you don't know when you can't learn what you don't know? <laughs> but of course, learners come to us wanting to walk before they can crawl, wanting success before failure. Because failure is a bad assessment, and success is an A plus 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 plus, as my students have often exclaimed, right? 
But wanting to succeed and not wanting to fail, instead of learning about themselves by understanding how they navigate risk, is part of the problem we as teacher, facilitator, supervisor, mentors are trying to solve. Many learners want to have things explained before they proceed. Please tell us what to do next. But this is not how we operate in the learning environment where we teach. What is the precise mathematical distance between one fishbowl and another? Then I might better be able to pre-measure the distance prior to the leap. And this is part of the challenge when learners tend to come from backgrounds where they have been generally told what to do, how to think, how to learn, how to be, how to do. Instead of being critically reflexive along the way, instead of learning from the wisdom of our scholars. <coughs> <laughs> That's why we motivate learners to go beyond thinking of the polarity of failure and success into the design of a typical project-based course. So, while learning in our program is a challenge, it, the main challenges are for students, learners to manage each other, the client, and the project. We centralize activities around the co-construction of prototypes. Then, we reflect on those activities and interactions. Here are some of the types of prototypes that we can co-construct. To show you what the prototypes might look like, I'll give you some examples of an actual case study of a project with a Vancouver-based indie video game developer. This is a whiteboard drawing of a battle mechanic for an iPad companion. Weeks later, after many paid for prototypes that were not well documented, and that's why they're not up there, uh, there are increasing levels of fidelity as time moves on. Transforming into simple physical prototypes that demonstrate how this particular musical game works then to digital on an iPad. Refined, user tested, reviewed, refined, reviewed, prototype, tested, 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 validated, 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 all with the experience of a potential user or customer in mind. Until we get to a place we never could have imagined. It's not success. It's not failure. It's an improvement of our work. It's the development of our craft through a persistent combination of prototyping, testing, refining based on feedback, based on succeeding, based on failing, and everywhere in between. Of course, the missing ingredient already discussed is reflection. So while Topic and Jonathan would argue that reflection upon failure may be an important learning aspect when developing successful problem-solving skills, I would equally argue that reflection upon success is just as important because what is success to a learner might not be success to a client or to the faculty who have lots of industry experience. And so we refine our model. Prototype. Now that all important reflection is where a lot of the learning has the potential to stick. Not stick as in sticks that you've been talking about. To stick. So we facilitate reflection, we elicit what learners think, we let learners propose solution states, we draw from case stories or war stories, we assign accountability for change. So I leave you with a few assertions that have come from practice and research conducted in project-based learning environments. It's not about whether learners' efforts were successful or not. It's about noticing and assessing the pers persistent efforts to push the boundaries of what is possible. We also guide learners away from the success-failure paradigm. How can they improve the next time is what our focus is. We also propose reflection tools. A strength-weakness chart is the easiest to think of. Some are familiar with SWOTs in business. Uh, Sometimes we use this feedback grid, which was developed by Stanford's D School. So in this particular one, uh, what do you do well already? Try to read my small text. Oh, what do you need to keep working on? Uh, what questions might you have? And what new ideas have developed out of your particular success, failure, or whatever? So to review, Prototyping in project-based learning environments eliminates the habit of simply talking about success and failure as the only outcomes of learners' collaborative efforts. It shifts the discussion to developing the art of solving problems and improving on how we solve them. 
And what that demands is a different set of criteria that inform how we assess. How did you learn to take risks, to recover from failure and success? Your ability to collaborate, to reflect on your experiences, to contribute in the co-construction of the protocol, and to document the problems that you've solved. Learners' abilities to embody the iterative prototyping process itself with every activity and interaction that they perform is the key for this. And I'm over by 18 seconds, damn it. Wow. <laughs> Thank you.